Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to the Morning Devotion uh, platform. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, your grace towards us today. Thank you for giving us another brand new day to see your goodness and your glory. We thank you, God, for your presence with us. We thank you because you invite us to come. And whenever we come, Lord, you truly fill our cups until they overflow. And so I thank you, God, and I honor you that, Father, you do this for us because you love us, because we are your children, your inheritance. We honor you and we praise you this morning and we thank you. We welcome you in our presence today. May you be glorified. May you be honored in everything that we do. And the rest of the day, as we go, may we also honor you and lift you up as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to the Morning Devotion program. Uh, today is Friday. We are still in the spirit of thanksgiving and just praising the Lord for his goodness. So let us go to the presence of God and just tell him how great he is in our lives by praising him this morning. We will worship the Lamb of God.
for that wonderful time in his presence, worshiping the Lord and rejoicing in him. Now we're going to go into our general prayers. And today in our general prayers, we're going to give a personal thanksgiving to the Lord for everything that he is about to do for us in this new month of June. So today, as you pray, you're thanking God for the new month of June and everything that he is getting ready to bless us with. Okay, in our first prayer, in our first prayer this morning, we're saying, Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing me and my family into the month of June, 2023. I am most grateful to you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, today we thank you for this day and for the new month of June. Thank you, God, for bringing us safely into a new month with blessing. And God, we thank you. We are most grateful to be alive today because every single day that you add to us, O oh Lord, is a day to glorify you. The psalmist said, I, I laid down and I and slept and I awaked for the Lord sustained me. You are the one that sustains us, God. You also tell us, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be thou not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. I will uphold hold you with the right hand of my righteousness. And we thank you, God, for these blessings that you usher us into a new month with blessings and promises of your strength, of your holding us, oh God, leading us by your right hand. We thank you, God, that in everything we give thanks to you because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so this morning, we want to give you thanks for everything. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. In our second prayer, we will say, Father, thank you for loading June 2023 with great blessings for me and my family. I receive all that you have for me this month in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that this month of June is fully loaded with great blessings for me and my family. I receive everything that you have for me in the month of June. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, because your word tells us, for the Lord thy God brings thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that, of, that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, that thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou may dig brass. When thou hast eaten and a fool, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given to thee. 
Heavenly Father, what an amazing promise and blessing of future things that you have already planned for us in this month of June. Father, I thank you so much that you have brought me into the month of June to be filled, to, to drink from brooks and fountains and springs of water out of valleys and hills. I thank you, God, that, Father, you will continually fill our cups, that we shall drink and we shall eat and we shall lack no good thing, that you have prepared nothing but great and beautiful things for us, pomegranates and olive oil and honey, oh God, all the pleasant uh, pleasurable comforts of life, oh God, that you have prepared for us this month. I thank you. That, and God, I thank you, God, for your blessing that goes with it, oh Lord, because you tell us that it is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. You're the one that causes us to receive and be able to enjoy it. And I thank you, my Father. Thank you so much for loading the month of June with great blessings for me and my family. In Jesus' name, amen. In our third prayer today, we shall pray and say, Father, thank you for June 2023. In Jesus' name, I declare June 2023, my month of God's visitation, enlargement, and deliverance. I receive all that you have purposed for me and my family in June 2023. Let us pray and make this declaration towards yourself and your family. My Father, I thank you for the month of June. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that in this month of June 2023, my month of God's visitation, it is my month of enlargement, and it is my month of deliverance. My God, I receive these blessings from you, and I declare these blessings over me and my family as you have purposed them for, the, for me. Thank you, God, because your word says, for the Lord thy God brings thee into a good land. Father, as you have promised that this land is a land of brooks, of fountains, of depths, of springs of that, that spring out of the valleys and the hills of God, that it is a land that you will enlarge all our, our, our harvests, oh God, of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, olive oil and honey. My God, we declare this month of June promotions for those that are working, oh God, and, and the ability to find jobs for those that are seeking, that my God, there will be no scarceness for all the members of this platform and their family members, oh God, that as we make this declaration today, God, the Lord, we shall find things even better than we expected, that God, it is not a, a land of stones, but it's full of iron, that God, when we go out to seek, that we shall find better than we expected, oh God, and I thank you, God, I thank you and I pray that after we have eaten and received from you that God we shall remember to be grateful to give thanks to you O Lord and to thank you for your goodness I thank you Lord and I honor you we receive these blessings as we make these declarations upon ourselves and our families in Jesus name amen in our fourth prayer today we shall say, Father, thank you because you take pleasure in prospering your servants. Help me to be willing and obedient to serve you in June 2023 so you can prosper me. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you because you, it is your great pleasure to prosper those that serve you. Father, this month of June 2023, I pray that I will be a willing vessel, that I will be a willing servant, obedient to everything that you ask me to do, that you may prosper me. Lord, I thank you because your word tells me, let us then shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yeah, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Thank you, God. Your word also tells me that all the commandments which you have commanded me today, I should obey to do them, that I may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto my fathers. So, Father, today, even by your word, God, as you have asked me to be obedient, as you have commanded my obedience to you and my willingness to love you and to serve you wholeheartedly, I pray that this month of June 2023, I will be a willing servant that is willing and ready and always hearing your voice and 
and, and obeying the voice of your command. God, I pray today that as we do this uh, individually and corporately on this platform, that God, you will prosper us as your servants, that God, you do please, it is your great pleasure to prosper us, that God, you find it so pleasing to you when you make us prosperous because of our obedience and willingness to go in and, and do whatever you ask us to do. So Lord Jesus, today, I ask that you help me to be a willing servant, obedient to serve you this month. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In our fifth prayer today, we'll say, Father, thank you for all the new blessings and breakthroughs you have for me in June 2023. Give me more grace to make the needed sacrifices to receive them in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in this new month, as you sent blessings and breakthroughs for me in the month of June 2023, Pray that, God, you give me the grace, O oh Lord, to make whatever sacrifice is needed, O oh God, just to, to obey your word, to obey the commands that you give to me. The voice, when you speak that, Lord, I be obedient, O oh Lord, and be willing to make whatever sacrifices are necessary, O oh God, to be obedient to you, because through obedience we find prosperity. And now, Brethren, I commend you to God, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. God, you have an inheritance for those that are sanctified. And Lord, I pray, God, this blessing upon myself, upon my family, that God, I'd be willing, oh God, that I may be built up in you and that God, I may be able to receive that inheritance among those that are sanctified. Your word also tell, tells in Second Samuel, and the king said unto Aruana, No, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price, neither will I offer burnt offering unto the Lord, my God, of that which does not cost me anything. So David brought, bought the threshing, threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Lord Jesus, I pray today that God, my sacrifice to you will cost me something. It will cost me, it will be worthwhile to you, oh God, that my sacrifice to you will not be empty words and empty promises because you do not delight in the promises of fools, as you tell us, O oh God. But Lord, that Father, whatever I bring to you this month will be a sacrifice that will be pleasing to you, that will be costly, O oh God, that it will be treasurable, O oh God. I thank you for your word of reminder to us, O oh Lord. Father, I pray as we bring you our sacrifices this month. They will be costly. They will be worthwhile. And that, Father, as we do that in this new month, as you give us blessings and breakthroughs, oh God, that you will help us to be willing to sacrifice for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In our sixth prayer today, we'll say, Father, grant me the great, more grace for a closer walk with you in June 20. 23. Help me to know your ways more and to serve your church and your kingdom more in this month of June 2023. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, today we ask for more grace to walk closer to you, O oh God, to draw nearer to do you, God. You say, if you, if you draw near, I will draw near. Father, I pray that God would be willing to draw nearer to you, O oh God. Help me, O oh Lord, to know your ways more, to serve you more in this month, O oh Lord, even for the greater good of your church, your body, your, your, your bride, O oh God, because God, you desire to come and Take a bride that is ready for you. Help us, O oh Lord. Help me, God, that I be willing to serve you, O oh God, that your kingdom may expand and that your bride may become more and more beautiful, O oh God, that will be adorned ready for the bridegroom, O oh Lord. Your word tells us he made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. Father, today I pray that God, even as I walk closer to you, that I will know more about your ways, oh God. Father, I do receive your acts, I do receive your miracles and your blessings every day, but I want to know you more, Lord. I want to know the giver and not the gifts, oh God. I want to know you, Lord, and to walk closer to you, that our friendship may be stronger, oh Lord, that I may know you better, that I may know the mind of God, even as a friend knows what a friend 
friend is thinking. Lord, I pray this blessing upon myself today. I also thank you for your word that says, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from your midst. Father, this month of June 2023, as we serve you, God, may you bless our bread and water, bless the work of our hands, bless everything we put our hands to do, and may you keep us healthy and safe so that we can serve you wholeheartedly. In Jesus' name, amen. In, in our seventh prayer, in our final prayer today, we are saying, Father, help me to serve you and take a more active part in the morning devotion program in June 2023. Help me to spread the word and bring more people to the platform this month. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for every member of this platform. We pray individually and corporately, God. Father, I pray that you help me today. Help me to take a more active part in serving you in this morning devotion program where you have prepared a table every single day for me, that I come every day and I partake of your goodness and I enjoy the goodness of your, of your presence. Oh God, you say you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Lord, as we come every morning, God, we find treasures, we find pleasures, we find instruction from you. God, every morning we delight to come before you because we know every time we appear in your presence, God, you load us, oh Lord, with goodness. And so, Father, I pray that, that, that I can participate more. I can give more by drawing people to your morning devotion program, by participating even in leadership and coordination in whatever capacity, oh Lord, that you have chosen for me this month, oh Lord, that whenever I'm called upon the Lord, I will be a willing vessel because any service to you is, is worthwhile. Any service to you, no matter how little, oh God. It is a great service to you. It is towards your kingdom and towards the body. And so, Father, I thank you, oh Lord, that God, this month of June, I will spread the word of God and that God, more people shall be drawn to you, Jesus. Your word says, oh Lord, in John chapter four, the woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the man, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Lord Jesus, I pray, even as the woman at the well did, oh Lord, we may never know her name, but she is written in the eternity, in, in, in eternally, oh God, she is remembered, oh Lord. She has be, built a memorial, oh Lord, a memorial has been built in her honor as the woman at the well that went out to spread the word. And so God, I pray today, Lord, that as this woman at the well went out and drew men, and told everybody in the city and said, is this not the Christ, the Lord Jesus, that shall always be on our minds, O oh Lord, that God, even as I go out into the city, as I go out into my job, the Lord, I shall be as the woman at the well, spreading the gospel and telling of the goodness of the Lord and saying to everyone, come see a man that has told me everything concerning me and letting everybody know that this is truly the Christ as men and women are drawn unto you. I thank you and I honor you, God. Thank you for this month of June. Thank you for the blessings of June. I honor you, God, and I praise you as we go forth to do your will in this month. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank God for the answers to prayers. We thank God for hearing us as we call on him. Now we shall go into our Bible reading. Our Bible reading today is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1 to 15. Our sister Lydia Olembo will be reading for us this morning. So welcome, sister Lydia. Thank you, my sister. Good morning, family. Second Corinthians 9, 1 to 15. For as touching the ministering of, to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that as, as Saia was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked 
very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I say, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confused confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is also able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes, causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is ab abandoned also by many thanksgiving unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank you. So now we're going into, I'm sorry, um, we're going into our charge. And this morning, we're happy to receive our Pastor Twinji to bring us our charge. You're welcome, Pastor Twinji. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We thank God yet for yet another day in his presence. Every day you see is a gift from God. Amen. And he says, the gifts of God are always perfect. Every good and perfect gift, they are always good and perfect. So we thank God for a good day and a perfect day. I just close up a little bit on um, the uh, principle of worshiping the king that I started yesterday. Uh, I pray that God will reveal his word to, to us this morning the word of the kingdom, because that's what sets us up for his blessing. Uh, I've said it, and I'm saying it clearer and clearer by the day, without the understanding of the kingdom and how it functions, most of the times you will be interpreting scriptures out of uh, concept, context and, and concept. Most of our understanding of God and his ways will be out of concept. We 
When Jesus came to us, he said it. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is has arrived, is at hand. Pretty much say your concept of things has to change. <laughs> of course, change your ways principally, but then your concept of things has to change. The way you think things has to change. The way you reason over things has to change. Change your concept of life. Again, we establish that he was born a king. And that changes everything. He's a king. Not just a leader. Or just a prophet like somebody, some people say. He's a king. As a matter of fact, I call him the king. He said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And I come to worship him. Kings demands worship. It's a king. We have come to worship him. That, that those are the wise men who are also kings, local kings, as we, we know by Bible history. They understand that. And they brought him gifts to worship him. And I said, worshiping also demands a gift. I also said, God never gave man ownership. He gave us rulership, but not ownership. He owns everything. For the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof, and the world and all they that dwell therein. That's why he said, look, the beast, the cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. The forest is mine. The wild beasts of the field are mine. <laughs> that means whatever we think we own is not true. We are simply stewards entrusted with such things. Don't carry ownership mentality. We are managers of sin, of such. I also said giving is one of the greatest acts of acknowledgement that you know you don't own it in the kingdom. When God tells you do something with what you have, never let it come to you that look, this is mine, I work for it, like some people will say. <laughs> You're giving it. You're doing what it says to do with it is the greatest sign that you are, you know that you don't own it. And I said also, God will always trust the man or the woman who keeps giving. You remember uh, 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 the story of uh, the widow of Zarephath. It, uh, God said to Elijah, he's still interested every time I read that statement. We need to understand it. Get down to Sidon of Zarephath, for I have commanded <laughs> a widow there to sustain you. And that's where a lot of us will be surprised because you will expect, if he says that, oh, that widow will, will have a, a bands full, our stores overflowing. So, I mean, said, it's even the word I have commanded. When Elijah got there, there were, we didn't see any indication of the woman saying, oh, yeah, you are the man God told me of yesterday. Like as it was with that of Samuel and so. But then the transaction began. And then we know the story, so it's, I don't want to talk too much on that. That was how the woman herself came into her plenty. Because you see, the mistake we make is to look at what is in our hands and think that is all there is. No. All there is, is all that God has. The issue is just that he has ways by which he administers them to us. So when we violate those ways, it, it wouldn't be able to. 
you could pretty much say that it was Elijah's presence in that house that sustained the woman, if you want to put it that way. Yet it looked as if, as though it was the woman that sustained him. God sustained them all. Just wanted to prove to you that what you claim is in your hand, he holds it. He determines what happens with it. That's how things rule. I said also yesterday, royal protocol requires that a gift must be presented when you visit a king. As you worship him, God said, never appear before me empty. Never empty at it. We, we, we read all those. Now, I want to go further in explaining that royal protocol before I pray today. The issue is the way kingdom runs or the way kings operate. When you, take, when you give a gift to a king, <laughs> listen to this, in his kingdom, not only do you acknowledge that everything in that kingdom belongs to him. I don't want to just talk of any king. Let's focus on God. When you give a, a gift to our king himself, in this kingdom. Not only are you acknowledging that, oh Lord, everything belongs to you. The other thing, one I said it yesterday, that king must be, that gift must be befitting to the king. Don't give a king what is insulting to him. In fact, God said that. He said, You bring the blind and the name. You say, because you say the table of the Lord is contentable, you say, offer it unto your governors now. Will they accept it of you? That's one side. But where I'm going today is you naturally, when you give to a king, the king becomes obligated to favor you. It's important for you to know that. Whatever you bring to a king, it's also a display of the value you have for that king. I said that yesterday. Value. It's all about value. Not necessarily volume, but value. We saw that with that woman that gave two pennies, if we can use that word today. And Jesus said she gave the highest because it's a factor of measure. Measure, measure. Measure reflects how much you have left when you do it. That's why you never look at what somebody is giving in terms of volume and think that's the way God is rating it. Somebody can give a thousand dollars and another one two dollars, and God says, This one who gave two dollars to me gave higher, much, much higher than the one thousand or the ten thousand because of measure. We are we all at different measures. Let me quickly round off here today what I want to say. That's why the Bible says yeah, your giving is to I think we just read that is to prove the sincerity of your love. It has to have value to you, to have value to him. Giving to a king also tells him thanks. It's telling him thanks for who you are to me, for what you've been to me, for sustaining me. Every time we worship him, we must do that to him. The wise men said it, we have come to worship him, and they presented it to him. But hear this today. When you give a king, you go read about kings or how kings are prayed. Thank God we have a king in this kingdom. The king is obligated to favor you, to give back to you. That's why God said, "They that honor me, I will honor." It's just the way that all this about giving has been presented in the church for today, and people don't understand. You have to understand it from the kingdom perspective. You don't serve God to get. You don't give to God to get. No, that concept is wrong. Of course, when you give, you get, but you don't do it to get. It's an act of worship and value for the king. Even the Lord Jesus Christ said it is very, very, very clear. 
Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, praise and shake it together, running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the measure, that's where the value comes in. The measure. We can give the same thing today. You give a house, yes. I give a house, same type. But the measure of what we give is different because by seven years, we are not the same. To give a car, I give a car, the same model, the same everything. But in the eyes of God, the measures are different. The measures are different. I remember so, some years ago in, in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, a lady gave me a house. I look at her. You have, this is all you have. You can't give. I don't need a house. Here in Addis Ababa, I live there, but I don't need a house. I'm, going, I'm a very fluid person. I go all over the world. I don't. She not only <laughs> gave me the house, she put serious money on top of it. My body is still shaking even as I'm talking about it, and it's almost 20 years now. So of no, it's of great value to her. And pretty much I think that summarizes all that she had. But then if I tell you her story today, it's a different ballgame completely from there. Even the house already gave me. I just told the people living there, I said, God has blessed you. Just maintain the house. Don't pay me any rent. I don't live for money in my life. Please understand what we're saying. Value, value, not volume. Value to you. And that is what makes the king obligated to you in the same measure. But you see, <laughs> the value to you and the value to the king are completely on different levels. He says it's the same measure. It's the same measure. The king is obligated. That's the way of the kingdom. The measure with which you give it determines the, the measure with which the king responds and the pressure you put on the king to respond. Don't go before the Lord empty again. If you love your king, you are also obligated to serve him with what he has entrusted you with. That's why Paul, when they, they did that to him, Paul said, look, me, I'm okay in, in any form. I've learned to be full. I've learned to be empty. I just keep doing what I'm doing of God. He said, but my God shall. Because I need you to understand this today. To the poor, either give it on the poor or lend it unto God. To the man of God, to the church, to whatever, every giving is to God first and foremost. They are just channels through which he receives them. And it's God who responds. That's why I said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Because he becomes obligated. A lot of us, what God has put in our hands has been the major obstacle of our lives because we don't we don't know what to do with it. Or maybe I should not say we don't know. We don't use it for the purpose for which God put it in our hands so that it can be obligated to us. Look at the widow of Zarephath. She could have eaten it and died. We don't use it. They are, they are, they, you have to have that mindset. I pray today that God will open up your understanding. In the name of Jesus. We're not going to do personal moment with God today. Because I want to pray for you. And you see that's part of the obligation of the king. I'm, very, I'm a man of words. I'm very careful the way I choose my words. I don't do anything in my life to impress people. I do it because he's telling me to do it or that's what's in my heart to do. And last night, uh, no, can I call it last night? Yesterday, early morning, like I said, 
when you hook me up with these words, because I was, I, I'm not sure what I was supposed to preach yesterday or today, but you woke me up in the morning, very early, around 2 a.m., and gave it to me, so I already knew I would do this. And he put a prayer in my mouth for me. Because your understanding of your walk with the king and understanding that concept changes everything. I pray again today that God gives you the understanding of the concept of the king and his kingdom. If you read the book of Revelations, you see it says, it's one of the 24 elders, it talks of elders with their crowns, it talks of thousands of thousands and ten thousands. You worship one day. I mean, sorry, you don't want it. All they were just doing there is worshiping the king. That's what they were just doing, worshiping the king. King demand worship. Inside that word worship is a lot of things. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, I pray for everyone hearing me here this morning. And you truly, truly open up their understanding to the concept of the king and his kingdom. We have seen you as our father. Lord Jesus, we've seen you as savior. Oh, we know you are savior. But now, my father, I pray, help us to see you as our king and know you as king. And as we stand before you, particularly today, I pray. The words you have put in my mouth is what I release in this prayer. That whatever be that pressure in the financial conditions of your people here, in their financial uh, welfare situation, that deteriorated act, I pray today as the king in whose hand it is to give it or take it, that you will turn it in their favor. as our king. I pray for everyone hearing me here this morning. You are our king, even the king of kings. Stretch forth your hands this morning and turn these deteriorating situations around in their favor. The Bible says, you are the ones that stretches forth your hand and satisfies the desires of every being. My king, turn it this morning in their favor. And I'm asking right now, because I can sense and feel the pains of sickness and disease. It is your duty as our king to maintain our welfare, our health. Therefore, Father, I present this ones here to you this morning. As I'm presenting it to you, I ask, heal. He said, Oh, not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound this 18 years, be set free. Let these pains 
and infirmities of the flesh be healed today. The king don't contend with. The king speaks and it becomes. Let these ones be healed physically, even as I'm speaking it today. Let the pains and the discomfort be no more. He says, strangers shall hear my voice and they shall fade away in their close places. Why you brought the kingdom to us, you manifested the kingdom to us. And in that manifestation, sickness, disease, infirmities of the flesh, were not permitted in your presence and among your people. So I say today, even I see that one just now, that they have said there is no medical solution. You have to live with it until you die with it. That's what they say. But I say today, the king who holds life in his hand, the king who gives life, the king who is the author of life, makes you free this morning. My king, in this kingdom, you put in our hands resources to do your bidding. Therefore, I pray for everyone hearing me, as many as will hear this. Enable the health and the welfare of your people that in so doing, they will be able to serve you effectively, giving to you honorably, working for the enlargement of your kingdom Passionately by the touch of heaven in the name of Jesus. So I say to you today, your family, your bodies, your business, whatever it is, your job, Let the touch of heaven bring you rest. Where you have been stagnated for so long by the virtues of the kingdom, I decree promotion for you today in sincerity and truth because the kingdom runs it. With the hand of the almighty God, the king of kings himself, secure you, establish you, and give you peace today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord of heaven. Thank you for making it be for us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Well, we thank God for today. What a day in the presence of the Lord. As you go today, may your path be straightened. And the light of God sh continually shine on your path. May the pains in your mind, and I don't mean physical pains, that's the travails of your mind, find the rest of God in that name of Jesus. Let's remember that this program runs Monday through Fridays. We're going to have a most fruitful weekend as you go today. And then we'll be back on this platform uh, Monday morning, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. Like we said, it's still our duty to bring people to be refreshed by God, to be impacted by God. He said, come see. That's what that woman said. And the whole city followed her. And when they came, they said it. We, 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 it's not because of what you said, but now we've had him. And we believe he's a Christ. We believe in him. So you bring, and then God does the rest. 
May the King of Kings himself crown your weekend with goodness. In the name of Jesus. Let's share the goodness together this morning. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. See you Monday morning. Jesus is. Lord.